All right, so we are in Algebra 1. Today's date is Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. So we're doing exponential functions from tables and graphs. What is our objective today, Emma? Write exponential equations from tables and graphs. There it is, thank you. And just as that constant review, an exponential equation looks like this. Something with a start, um, again, this can be called, what? what is another name for start? Uh, sorry, your card should already be in, in Esha. Uh, Larissa? Oh, yeah. Larissa? Oh, um, initial, yeah. Let's all write it down. This is initial. So when you're looking at word problems and you see the word initial, that means that's that number right there. And then factor, if it says the word, hey, it's multiplying by factor of 7.3, just write down 7.3 for that factor. If I say double, let's write down double. Double means my factor is what? Nice, easy, yeah, Kira? Uh, times two. Yeah, factor would be two. Um, and then if I have a percent, we know that we can convert that into a percent pretty easily, where we do one, I'll just come down here in a different color, like one plus or minus, depending if you're going up or down, that percent for that factor. Cool, so that's our good review of an exponential function. Let's see how to apply the same formula to table problems and then eventually graph problems. So in example one, I have a table over here and I'm, I'm telling you this is going to be an exponential function. It tells us, hey, we're doing this form a times b to the power of x, which is basically what I wrote up here. It's a little bit different. I didn't use a and b, I said start and factor instead, but basically the same thing. How am I gonna turn this table into an exponential function? Hmm, any ideas? Charles? Well, the fx is also equal to y, right? Yes, yeah, so yeah, I can so think of this as just y. So when x is 0, so the, you can say that a is 5. So when x is 0, y is 5, so it's 0. So yeah, let's y. go ahead and label it. This 5 right here is a. That is our initial amount. So we're going to come down here and write 5. Can someone explain another way why that is our initial amount? Something to do with x? What? Um, well, that's our y-intercept, like a, because that's when x is 0, so that's only going to be on the y-axis, and that's when the the line goes through the y-axis is the y-intercept, so that's when x is 0. Cool, yeah, and let's come back and add that to our notes up here, too. Like, this start right here, that's where our x is equal to zero. What is the y value? When x is zero, what is our y value? Or if you want to think of this as your f of x value. So when x is zero, that is your start value. So down here we say, oh yeah, x is zero, therefore our start value, our initial value, that a is five. Okay. Um, but now we need to keep filling in the formula. We're halfway there. We have to say times something. I don't know what that something is to the power of x. How do I figure out what that factor is? That's going to be a little bit tricky. Let's see one hand. That's great. Thanks. Any ideas? Yeah, Charles again. So, like the x, so that's one comma one. So, we can find out what from five gets to nine. Am I adding or subtracting to get there? You could add, add four. Or sorry, adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. You have four choices. Exponential is always going to be not adding, but multiply, yeah. So ask your question again. What do I? So why would it be exponential? It tells us, hey, this is exponential. It's written like this function. Yeah, I agree. It could have been linear. It could have been a lot of things. Since we only have two points, it could be almost anything. Times, times something, right? Yeah, so you asked your question really well, and then I messed you up by asking you what operation you're using. But Charles had it correct. Like, how do I get from 5 to 9? That's our main question. And the main thing that we have to know is, hey, we're only allowed to multiply because it's an exponential function. Exponential, the way that we move in a table, is we can only multiply our y values. So what do I multiply by 5 to get to 9? And the answer is easier than you might think. It's going to be the same thing for every single table in Khan Academy. What can happen to 5 
So what, what here do I multiply by 5? Five? 5 times this what gives us 9. 5 times this factor gives us 9. What times 5? What? Um, I'm thinking it's 1.8 because 5 times 18 is 90 because 5 times 20 is 100. <laughs> you are indeed correct. It is 1.8. And that's actually not the direction that I wanted to go, but that is awesome that you knew that it was 1.8 and did the math in your head. Yes, you are 100% correct, and I'm impressed. I'm going to show a different, easier way to do it if that's okay with everyone else. Because that was, I did not even see 1.8 until you pointed that out, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, Charles, did you want to add on to that, or a different method? Well, I was thinking that since y got 1.8, you could take the x amount and the y amount, and maybe like subtract 1.8 from the y amount. Uh, you're really, really close. It's not subtract, but, and it's not the x's. You're, you're close. Every single time you see a table, if I just do this bottom number divided by the top number, that's the fraction that I multiply by. So if I multiply by, if, well, first, if I divide by 5, 5 divided by 5 is, everyone's going to shout out. 25. One. 5 divided by 5. five. One. So 1, yes. Okay, now if I multiply by 9, I'm left with, what's 1 times 9? Nine? 9. Oh, so if I divide by 5 and multiply by 9, if I multiply by 9 fifths, I get 9. Also 1.8. Which is also 1.8. <laughs> So that's the, the trick. You just multiply by this number, the bottom divided by top. So I'll write it down off to the side. You're really going to, your factor that you're looking for, uh, whenever you have a table, your factor is going to be equal to the bottom divided by the top. I, there's not a, that's a horrible, horrible formula, and I don't want anyone to just memorize that formula. But that's the general way to find the factor. If I just say, hey, this bottom divided by the top, that is the factor. And it's going to be the same thing down here when we're working with it. We'll have to simplify the fraction, though. So the answer down here, as Wyatt said, you could say 1.8. That is 100% correct. Um, but for most of us, for these problems to make them nice and easy, the same formula over and over, 9 fifths to the power of x, done. We have finished example number one. Uh, question, Kira, then Charles. Yeah. Um, would both 1.8 and 9 fifths be right in context? Yes. Both of them will be 100% correct in context. Uh, Charles, then Esha. Um, so are you allowed to divide instead of multiply? Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, so when you went to 5 to 9, didn't you? Could you also divide? Ah, yes. Yeah, so I could have done 5 divided by 9. Or, or sorry, 9. Wait. What do you mean? So divide? Like, I was looking at the next one. Oh no, you're still going to be doing this. Because you, could you divide? So you, you're still going to want to multiply, like in terms of the table going this direction, right? Going from here to here. Well, you could divide by three. Though. You could divide by three, which is the same thing as multiplying by one third. One third, exactly. Yeah. So you're always multiplying, even though you you see, oh, division is the easiest way. Technically, it's always multiplying just by a fraction. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, you're so correct. Three would be correct in that situation. One third is correct, but not three, because it always has to be a multiplication problem. Um, all right, yeah, so let's read the next problem. We have the same thing. It's an exponential function because it says it's a times b to the power of x, and I have my table over here. So first, my initial value. What is it? Uh, how's he? I think it's 15. It is indeed 15. Why? Why is it the answer 15? Why is the initial value 15? Something to do with the x-coordinate? That's where x is equal to yeah, 0, exactly. Wherever x is 0, that y value, the corresponding y value, is your initial value. That is your y-intercept. Yes, thank you. All right, so now I need to find the hard bit, which is your common factor to the power of x. What is this common factor? I mean, Charles kind of showed it, but uh, there it is. Emma, do you still have your card? Oh, does someone have their card? Yeah, Ulysses? I got one third. How'd you get one third? Okay, so 5 divided by 15, so I'm here multiplying by 5 over 15, and then say again what you did? I think 5 divided by 5. Oh, divided top and bottom by 5, yeah, okay. Divide by 5, divide by 5, I, yeah, 1 third. Nice, yeah, thank you. Question, Esha. In Khan Academy, do you have to simplify it? 
No, but in my class, yes. <laughs> You'll get it correct if you type in 5 fifteenths for this random lesson. I know in Khan Academy it's really hit or miss, like, you need to simplify here but not here, and sometimes they don't say so many instructions. You're not going to lose points on this lesson if you don't simplify. But practice simplifying, because sometimes, a lot of the times, you are going to be needing to do that. All right, so that's tables. I'm moving on to graphs. We're all good with tables, question, Charles? Are you ready to solve it already? All right, so... Um, this is a graph of an exponential. You can probably tell by the shape because it's curving up and I have this asymptote that's happening down here. I'm getting closer and closer to this x-axis without actually touching it. I know it, it looks like I'm touching that because I made the line too thick. By the way, theoretically, uh, this is kind of a brief tangent, but in mathematics, mathematics doesn't exist on paper. Mathematics exists in our head. So when I draw this line, this line is infinitely thin. It has zero thickness. So when I draw it on the paper, it is now imperfect because it's not in my mind. When I think of a circle, a circle, the perfect idea of a circle is in my mind. It is perfectly round. But if I ever try to demonstrate that with paper or with art or anything, that circle is now not strictly a circle. A circle, by definition, is perfect. And that only exists in our mind. So math really exists in our mind, and we do our best attempt to put it on paper. So if it looks like it is touching the x-axis, that's because it's an imperfect representation of the perfect mathematics that happens in our head. Tangent over. All right, so I need two values. I need an A, an initial amount, and I need B, a factor, the thing that I multiply the heights by. Ugo, talk to us. What's the initial amount? It is indeed three. How'd you get that? Oh. Perfect. Just using the definition. X is zero, so on this X axis, zero is right here, and that has a height of three. Perfect. Um, next, I need to find a common factor. This one's going to be a bit tricky because I don't know how to get to three to seven. Like some weird fraction is going to get there. I'm not sure. Does anyone still have their card out? Anyone has a card? I think Eamon still has one. Is there a question that was out there? No. Yeah, that was. Okay. Oh, no, never mind. Not, not a question. Okay. Uh, Eamon, go for it. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, um, I'm seeing, um, you, you multiplying it with a, where the numerator is greater than the denominator. Yes, I definitely agree. Yeah, you're thinking exponential growth, so something on top bigger than something on the bottom. I agree. Um, yeah, can someone else tell me what number should be on the top, which number should be on the bottom, Kira? You are correct. How'd you get that? Well, kind of just relying on what we always did, like, when we just talked about y factor on top of the second y, or whatever, the y value on top of the second y value, which doesn't really make sense, but, like, I think it does make sense because we, we're going to the right, essentially. I'm going to the right in the x-coordinates. I'm going to the right in the x-coordinates. So I put the second coordinate divided by the first coordinate. The second coordinate, 7, divided by the first coordinate, 3. 7 thirds, yeah. That makes sense, and it matches the table. Are there any questions about how we got 7 thirds? I'm hoping there is one. Um, yes, Asha. Do you want to go for it, Kira? Sure. Um, so, well, three is just kind of the first number because, like, it's like the same reason why we put five on the bottom in the first example. Uh, just like the first one. Okay. Yes. I see. That's not really a common answer, I don't think. No, that makes sense. Yeah, and then I think a better way of writing this factor formula instead of bottom over top is second point over the first point. So our first point was 5, so 5 was on the bottom, and then our second point was on the bottom, and then second goes on the top. Yeah, so that, I think writing the formula like this, second divided by first is probably easier, because the second point we had was, the y coordinate was 7, the, the first point, the y coordinate was 3, second divided by first, 7 divided by 3 is just 7 thirds. All right, so everyone has the updated formula. The factor should really be read as the second divided by the first. All right, so our final example, the one that I'm very proud of because it's our own backyard. Who wants to read? Why? Due to a bus known as Ihorn's mother weed that grows waist high, Mona Lake has seen a decline in California gold. In 
2019 is only 11,075 nests per capita, the lowest in the previous 34 years. If the invasive weed keeps growing and the number of gold nests declines by 20% each year, which graph would show the number of gold nests over the next few years? Cool. And I'm going to pause there to actually talk about what this story is. So I found this because uh, Jeff McCulkin was showing me on his phone them actually carrying out what's happening in here. So this is the San Diego Tribune um, that has the, um, the article, Invasive Plant is Overgrowing the Goals, Mono Lake Nesting Grounds, and the even cooler one, Los Angeles Times, the same exact title, Non-native weeds are engulfing the ancient breeding grounds of Mona Lake's California goals. All the information I'm getting is from this article. Like, look at this. This year, 11,075 nests were counted, blah, blah, blah. It tells us all this information. The only thing that I had to assume, and hold on, let's find. There he is, Jeff. He's in the New York, or Los Angeles Times. So cool. Uh, I said New York Times earlier, didn't I? It was the Los Angeles Times. Uh, but still really cool. And that's where all this information came from. The only thing that I made up is I don't know how much it's declined. I just assume, okay, what happens if it's 20%? That's the only made up part about this. Everything else is true. And that's what uh, five form smother weed looks like off to the left hand side. If you're curious, it's a very gross plant. Well, not gross. It Even when it dies, it leaves like a skeleton for up to three years. And it's really hard to get rid of it because you can't use chemicals. If you use chemicals, the birds won't get there. So how do you get rid of it? Burn it exactly. We go. So they've been burning it. Uh, Jeff showed me some pictures. It's kind of cool. Anyway, so which of these four graphs show what's happening in our problem up here? I need everyone to like really look at these graphs. Like, what's going on? Some of them are steep. Some of them are not so steep. Some of them have different initial amounts. Can we eliminate any of these right off the bat? I see lots and lots of hands. Emma. Why? Because we know that 700 is not going to be enough to Or 7,000, yeah. So let's get rid of D. I agree, yeah. 7,000 is not our initial amount. And it labels the agricultural growth factor. Which is actually not something that we can actually do. Uh, what do you mean by that? Um, I'm not sure if I understand what you're trying to say. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. And I also think we can eliminate A, B, and also the percentage of Okay, yeah. Wrong initial amount. I totally agree. Cool. Thank you. All right. I need someone else to tell me how do I decide between B and C now? One is not so steep. One is very steep. What's going on here? Charles. Well, so the 20% each year, so you can, it's 0 0.2, then you subtract 1 and it's 0 0.8, then you multiply 0 0.8 through 11.75. 11, 11.075, you said times 0 0.8? Yes. And you get about around 9,000, a little over 8,000. What does that mean? You compare, well, so that's when one, so that's when x is one. Okay. So if you compare it from b to c, when x is one, which one is closer? Oh yeah. So this one looks like it's about two thousand, and this one down here looks like it's about <laughs> a little under nine thousand. Okay. So you're, you're concluding, therefore, Charles, that the answer is yeah. There it is. Yeah, so when you're given these graphs in context, you do need to do exactly what Charles did. You have to calculate, okay, I have to do 1 minus that 0 0.2. So that means 0 0.8 is our factor. And then you have to actually go one step into the future. You say, okay, what is 0 0.8 times whatever our initial amount is for our first step and compare this point for the first step versus this point? And I'll come off and do some scratch work off to the side. We said 0 0.8 times 11,075 is equal to, what did we say it was? Uh, 865, I think. 865. It was 8,680. No, 8860, I think. 8860, yeah. 8860. Yeah. So this point looks good. That point looks wrong. All right. That's how we have our completed notes. All right, are there any questions about this lesson? 
All right, give me a fist of five on how well you can carry out our objective to write exponential equations when given graphs or tables. I'm seeing four, five, 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 four, four, five, four. All right, those are really high scores. Thank you, guys.